Basically, <laughs> if you were to think of me as the king of this event, now would be the time to... Oh, I've got to sit down. Next is Dave Cross. Hi. Do I get an extra eight minutes? Maybe. <laughs> so, I'm Dave and I'm a Republican. Honest. I have to get that in at the start because by the end of the talk you might be doubting me. Uh, it's kind of important to get definitions right though. I, when I say I'm a Republican, I'm very much not that kind of Republican. That would be bad. <laughs> I'm also not really this kind of Republican. Well, yeah, maybe 20 years ago, but... No, I guess they, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of that wishy-washy, liberal, fluffy, guardian-reading kind of guy, a, a Republican that basically just thinks that there are probably better ways to choose a head of state. Um, so given all of that, what am I doing running a website that lists the British line of succession? I blame Cora. <laughs> <coughs> I joined Cora three or four years ago. I thought, you know, I'll be answering questions on Pearl, maybe. <laughs> Web te te technologies in general, uh, Doctor Who, science fiction films in the 1980s, bad telly in, in, in general, Marvel comics. It didn't quite work out that way. <laughs> <laughs> they draw you in. They, so, I mean, there's, um, London's on that list, and history is, I think, just outside that list, and that kind of got them giving me questions about <clears throat> Buckingham Palace and things like that, and they were easy to answer, so I got drawn in. And suddenly, it's, it's, it's really not difficult to become an expert in a subject on Cora. That's because so many Cora questions are so bad. Those <laughs> <laughs> examples. Well, this isn't actually such a bad question, except we haven't had the Queen of England for 300 years. <coughs> Why does Britain always have a Queen of England? It's genetics, basically. <laughs> this is a trick question. Who would be king if Prince Charles dies before Queen Elizabeth II? Well, no one would still have a queen. <laughs> Then we get the conspiracy the, the, the theories, um, and the answer to this is stop getting your news from the National Enquirer. <laughs> uh, and then there's the all-time <laughs> yes. answer, no. <laughs> so, I'm going to give you all the information that you need in order to become an expert so that you can become the king or queen of the UK and bonus 15 other Commonwealth realms that come for free. So, step one, be a close re-relation re re of the monarch. The closer the better, children's best. If, if the monarch doesn't have children, then being a sibling of the monarch is, is, is good, or maybe a niece or nephew, uh, uncles, aunties, cousins. Uh, but there's actually there's a proviso here, step one, uh, don't be a woman with a, a younger brother because they get preference. Uh, step two, so many people get this wrong. <laughs> don't die. Uh, step three, don't be illegitimate, because they, they put great store by stuff like, like this. It's not so much of a problem these days, um, but go back five, six, seven hundred years, and this was often the excuse used for sort of just switching tracks and changing the family that, that were in charge. Um, step four, now this is vitally important. So much of the laws around this are based around stopping the Catholics getting back in, into power. This says nothing about Muslims or Hindus or even damn atheists, but you cannot be a Catholic. It doesn't say. Yeah, it doesn't say. It doesn't say and there's another step, um, step 4A, you can't even marry a Catholic because there's something about, I don't know, interchanging bodily fluids with a Catholic that yeah. the germs get on to or something. What does that have to do with marriage? Um, but actually there's been some recent updates to this. Um, this uh, with the Succession to the Crown Act, which came in in um, 2013, you might, those of you that watch the news might notice this, is, this got sneaked in just before um, Prince, what's his name, George, came uh, along. Um, so, so we saw step one, don't be a woman with a young brother, that's now out. <laughs> Women now have exactly the same rights as men <coughs> becoming monarch. 
Um, and um, step four, I don't wear a Catholic mass also. Uh, I guess maybe they insist you wear a condom or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the, the, the updated um, rules are be royal, be alive, be legitimate, and don't be a Catholic. <laughs> So that's all you need to know in order to answer all the questions on the laws of, 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 of succession that come up on um, <laughs> Cora. So having worked all that out for myself, I had a brilliant idea. Let's put up a website that calculates what the line of succession is um, for on every date back to 1701. Now if you want to know why 1701, it's a very interesting story, but I don't have time for it, so grab me in the... Um, it's got to do with Catholics. <laughs> I'll be in the break and I'll be happy to tell you. I mean, how hard can it be? And you know, every time you ask this question of yourself, the answer is always far harder than you think it's going to be. But it's a family tree. And those of you that know me know that I have previous in this area. I do a bit of genealogy in my spare time, so I understand how a family tree works. So here's a family tree of the, um, the current queen. And actually, when you're talking about the line of succession, it's not really a family tree you want because it's all about the bloodline. So we can actually lose all these people that married into the family and just talk about people that actually descended from the queen. Now currently, if you count up that, that gets you to 17 people. But we want to do better than that. I, 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 set myself, I set myself a target of getting 30 people in the line of succession for every day back to 17. Oh, one. So we need more data. Uh, we need to look at perhaps the descendants of George the Sixth. That's the current Queen's father. So if you include all of his descendants, um, that brings in uh, Princess Margaret, oh, who fails on the um, "Don't be dead." <laughs> but she has two children, and they each have two children. So that's six more people to add. Um, then you can go back to George the Fifth and his kids. Um, if you hear people on the news talking about uh, the Duke of Kent and the Duke of Gloucester, that's where they come in, um, so far so forth. Uh, census of Victoria, um, this, uh, this is as far back as I've got at the moment, um, and I think that gives, I, I don't have all of her descendants, just all the ones that I need to get 30 people in the list at any given time. And I think that's got me about 400 people in my database. And of course, descendants of Victoria, she had nine ch children, and her descendants married into all the royal families of um, Europe. So, you know, once you get to Victoria, you get people that have got their fingers into all the royal family. Uh, and then eventually you want to get back to all the descendants of Sophia. Sophia, you say, who the hell is that? Well, 170001, and she, uh, she, was the, the only, she was the nearest person that wasn't the Catholic. Yeah. Um, so she was set up um, in 1701 to be the, uh, the heir to the throne when Queen Anne was on the, the throne. And you remember the don't be dead rule? Sophia died two weeks before Queen Anne did. Um, so her son was... King George the first, the, the first of them. Uh, and I, I, the estimates are that she has something like 6,000 descendants currently alive. So I'm taking myself quite a challenge, but you know, Wikipedia is your friend. I spent many a pleasant afternoon cutting and pasting data out of Wikipedia. Some complications, because it's not going to be that simple. Names and titles, these people, these people <laughs> can't stick to the same name for more than a couple of weeks at a time. Take our current queen. When she was born, her father was the Duke of York. Who had 10,000? No. <laughs> so she was known as Princess Elizabeth of York. Um, when her uncle abdicated, her father became queen, so she became the Princess Elizabeth. A few years later, she married um, the Duke of Edinburgh. Well, she, she married Prince Philip, who became Duke of Edinburgh, so she became the Duchess of Edinburgh. And then eventually, obviously, in 1952, she became. So it's not just her. Almost everyone in the database has multiple names and titles depending on what the data is. So you have to add a titles table, time based thing. 
um, and a method that gives you the type, the name on a particular date, and all that kind of standard stuff. Exclusions. Maybe you're ex you get excluded because you marry a, a Catholic. Maybe you get included again. <laughs> Maybe you get included because the law on being excluded from marrying Catholic is gender. <laughs> Maybe you become excluded because you become a Catholic. Now, this is interesting because it's not. I'm not just talking about people who, an adults think, "Oh, hang on, I'll become a Catholic." But actually, as far as the law of succession is concerned, children don't become Catholics until their confirmation, which happens about the age of 13 or 14. So you can have a family where both parents are Catholics and all of their children are not Catholics officially, therefore they are in the line of succession, even though their parents are. And they're one by one as they go to confirmation, they get knocked off the list. <laughs> and actually one of my current problems is it's really difficult to find the dates of when these people had had their confirmations. Anyway, oh, male preference, <clears throat> primogenitor. This is the thing about um, men being more important than women, which is obviously bollocks. So it was abolished in uh, 2013, on, on March the 27th. For children born after the 27th of October 27th. So, enter Senna Lewis. Now, Senna Lewis um, is the daughter of Davina Lewis, who is one of the grandchildren of the Duke of Kent. So, uh, so when she was born, in 2010, she was 24th in line to the throne. Two years later, uh, so um, Davina Lewis is married to a Kiwi, hence the stupid names. <laughs> two, 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 two years later, her brother, importantly her brother, was born. Now in the two years in, in between, two other babies had been born higher up the list. So Senna dropped from 24th to 26th. And then her brother comes along, who's more important than her, because he's a man, or a boy. <laughs> and so she gets bumped down to 27th, and he's 26th. So, on the 26th of March, 2013, the, the latter end of the line of succession looks like this. 22nd, is that Tane? 27th, Senna. Two days later, when the laws come into I <laughs> swap round, and your data model has to handle that. Uh, mine currently doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so let's talk some technology. Um, the whole thing is a Dancer 2 app. Um, it gave me some data presentation challenges, which I'd like to share with you. So, this is um, how part of the front screen looks. You'll notice it tells you the relationship of the person to the sovereign. Now, as I said, I'm a genealogist, so I know how this works. To, to find the, the relationship between two people, you find their nearest common ancestor, so you walk back up both of their parents until you find that someone who's the same in both lists. You then count the intervening generations between that common ancestor and the two people, and then you've got a chart that looks something like this, and you basically have to look across the top for one number and down the bottom, and you say, oh yes, that's their second cousin, twice re re removed, or, or whatever. It's really not very difficult to do, but there's a lot of data to crunch, especially when I'm showing 30 people on, the, um, on a page. Um, so, enter Menkapi. Or more specifically, enter CHI. And if you take one thing away from the talk, anyone that's interested in the technology, CHI is wonderful. It's like DBI for caching. It stands for the cache handling in interface. Um, I don't know whether you, you, those are can read this, but basically this is in my um, model class. I've created a cache attribute and a build cache, which basically just calls CHI new. It's mem cache D type, and just returns that. And so then, uh, also in the model class, I've got a method called get re re relationship between two people. Um, and you pass in the model object and two people, which are um, DBIC um, records. And then you call this <coughs> compute method on your um, cache attribute. And basically what this does, it, uh, there are two important arguments and one unimportant argument. The first one, is you pass it a key. And so I've just made up a key by appending the two database I, IDs together. And the second argument allows you to, to uh, pass in um, expiry stuff, that kind of thing. And then it says, if you can't find this key in the cache, then call this method. And this calls a, a method actually on the DBIC object that does the difficult work of um, 
calculating the relationship. And so if compute doesn't find the key, it calls this, gets the value back, stores the value in the cache, and returns you the value. So that's all really quite neat and clever, uh, but it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work, and you probably you can't see this at all. Um, but basically, uh, in my template, I was calling um, the uh, person re re the relationship with method on my person object, rather than calling the version in the model. And it was just, it was hidden because it wasn't actually in the the um, code in the modules that I was looking at, and it was in the template, I missed it, and that's why it didn't work. So, two lessons were learned. Lesson one, always use a model layer. And I don't mean always write a model layer, I mean always use a model layer. <laughs> uh, lesson two, cache all the things. Uh, and actually, this is my the hit and miss rate on, on my caching at the moment, so I think I'm actually doing pretty well. Moving on. Um, so the other, another thing that you'll see on this page is this previous change. And there's also, if necessary, there's a next change, obviously. Um, so, and the, all, all these dates are linked. So you click on them and it will show you the session on that particular date. So calculating these change, dots, these change dates is a, is a batch job. It currently takes about six hours. Because I've got, what, just over 100 years, 365 days a year, lots of days. So basically I need to calculate the succession on every date and then write down the ones where it changes. Um, but once I've got that information, it turns out to be really useful, not just for that next and previous stuff. Um, but So I can take dates in the URLs of my site. So write a succession without a, a date gives you the, the current one or, or you can put an ISO standard date on the end of it. But the thing is, these three dates, which is today, the start of the year, and the start of the year three year, um, two, two, two years ago, they all return the same content. And Google doesn't like that. Different URLs that return the same content, Google thinks you're trying to game the, the system. So, but Google gives you this tool to get out of that called a canonical tag, and you can put uh, this tag in the in the top of your, your HTML and you can say, okay, I know this, this page looks like the, the page, at this U, U, URL, so I only index that one, I don't care that you don't index this one. And there's just three examples from different, so I've probably, I think, so over the, what is it, three, three, three and a half, four, four thousand days in the database, um, there's probably only about 200 different lines of succession, so there's 300 different pieces of data. <coughs> uh, a little bit more about SEO, um, stru structured data. Uh, if you were to look at the source code of one of the pieces of information, uh, this is the Prince of Wales, who's at number one, obviously, in the line of succession. Um, and this bit at the top looks a bit strange, it's not really um, standard HTML. Um, and I just realised actually I've got his date of birth there and you can mark that up as well, change that. Um, this is structured data and Google likes structured data. Um, basically Google's very clever, no, 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 no one doubts that. And Google can go away. Google likes, well if you give Google a pile of text it can go away and work out what's going on. But if you put the structured data tags like this in your data then it makes Google's life easier and Google's like Pearl programmers, it's lazy. <laughs> so if you make it life easier, it will be, it'll, it'll be more likely to understand what's going on in your page, in your site. Right, so that's kind of a, a, just a bit of an overview of, of, of where we currently are and some of the problems that I've had and solved, or in some cases not solved yet. Um, but to do this, well, I did say that I need more data. Um, you would think that this kind of stuff was out there on the internet, but no, or if it is, it's in horrible, table form formats that you have to parse and scrape. Um, more views, I, 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 I'd like to display the data in, in different ways. At the moment, it's just a complete list, but there's actually a hierarchy of the family tree in there, so it'd be nice if um, you know, the Queen's children were at one level and their children were indented in a... Or maybe even 
Um, some of you might have read some blog posts I read. I, I wrote. Some of you might have read blog posts that I read last year. But some of you might have read some <laughs> blog posts that I wrote last year about SVG, and I had quite a lot of fun um, drawing things with SVG. But it'd be nice to draw to use SVG to draw the family tree in in some way. Also, maybe a page. I've got this idea of a, of a, a page for each person where it shows all the title changes, but also some like, maybe perhaps a spark line of how their position has um, changed <laughs> over, <laughs> over time. And more marketing, because although it's, it's out there, and um, it's basically been working for about three months, so no one visits, <laughs> no one's interested. <laughs> no, I need to market it somehow. So, Prince Charles. But that means <laughs> talk, yeah, I need to talk to royalists, which <laughs> um, so anyway, that, so that's why I give talks like this, because now you're marketed too. <laughs> um, so there's the site, succession.co.uk, codes on GitHub, there's a Twitter account because you don't exist without a Twitter account these, these days, and there's my Twitter account because please follow me because I'm needy. And leave la revolution, and thank you very much. Um, Ha <laughs> ha.